chance could be the most thorough, sophisticated, convincing catfish we ever had. This episode has been highly requested by a bunch of you for a long time, just because you've seen clips of it on Catfish's official YouTube channel, but you wanted me to review the whole thing. So here I am reviewing the messy ass episode that is season seven, episode 35, Matthew and Chance. This is another in-between episode where Max was gone, but Cami wasn't yet officially a host. So Kamiko Glenn, who is an actress best known for her work in Orange is the New Black, is our guest co-host. And honestly, I think she does a really good job. And we actually find out that she regularly watches the show, which to me is exciting because then you're invested in what's going on. And you could tell she really was like, I really loved her as a host. So Kamiko and Neve start off with an email from Matthew, who is 29 years old and lives in Atlanta. He met Chance, his supposed lover, on Instagram, who lives in New York and is 31 years old, and they met about three years ago. So they actually met when Matthew posted about a mutual friend that had passed away, who was in the LGBTQ plus community. Chance commented on the post, so then Matthew reached out to Chance and was like, hey, if you ever want to talk, like, just hit me up, just let me know. And they quickly started talking every day and exchanged numbers right away. Matthew says that Chance comes to Atlanta quite often so this seemed like an ideal situation for him at the time but then we find out that every time Chance is in town there's always a reason why he can't meet and there's always a reason why he can never video chat so typical catfish shit oh lord Chance even told Matthew that he wanted to move to Atlanta, so Matthew, being the responsible, loving person that he is, started to do things to try and make this more of a possibility rather than just like something they talked about. So he began looking for apartments and jobs for Chance, but then all of a sudden Chance said that it wasn't happening. But I'm also just like, me personally, I don't even know if I would do all this for someone who I was in a relationship with to keep it a buck with you. So I can't imagine doing all this for someone off of the prospect of a relationship. It seems like they have a situationship, to be honest, which I'm like, a situationship is terrible, but an online situationship must be even worse. So then Matthew tells us that he has been saving himself for a chance, so he needs their help because he's trying to get laid. He doesn't say that part. I just think that part's true. So Kamiko and Neve quickly hop on a video chat with Matthew and we find out that he used to be a deputy sheriff, which but the police, you already know where I stand on this. Matthew says that he and Chance have a lot in common, like the fact that they're both twins, they're both bisexual. Everybody's so creative. And Matthew said that it was very easy to fall for Chance. Matthew said that all of the excuses that, that Chance has been giving definitely do not add up, but Chance saying that he was gonna move to Atlanta and they were gonna be together like for real, for real, made him forget about all of the things that didn't make sense. Boo! Tomatoes, tomatoes, tomatoes. I said this in another video and I will say it again, do not let anyone ever sell you a dream of love, a prospect of love without actually putting action behind those words. Cause what do you mean you're in my city and we won't meet up? But you say you're gonna move to my city and then I'm just gonna forget about all of that even though when you're in the city that you said you're gonna move to, you can't make time for me. I'm not boo boo the damn fool. I'm not falling for this. So we then find out that Matthew is taking this situation ship quite seriously. And I keep calling it a situation ship because it's still unclear if they are in an exclusive committed relationship or if the idea is like once Chance moves down to Atlanta, then they'll be together. Matthew says that he can see himself building a whole future and a whole family for Chance. And that's why he's not, he's not being intimate with anybody else. He's not getting freaky with anybody else. He is waiting for his man. And I can respect that. If it wasn't a catfish situation. <laughs> So Neve and Kamiko hop off the call and they head to Atlanta. And then the day after that, they head out to meet Matthew at his home and his house is real cute. I really do like it. Like everything is on point. But then Neve just walks right into Matthew's house and Matthew says, breaking and entering. Breaking and entering. <laughs> Finally, somebody called Neve out for his mischievous ways because you can't just be walking up in people's houses like that, sir. Ugh. But they waste no time. They sit right down and get right to business. Matthew thinks that part of the reason Chance isn't showing up is because he thinks that Chance is a trans man possibly because on Chance's social media, on his Instagram posts, he would hashtag FTM, which for those of you who don't know that stands for female to male, like you're trans. And Matthew clarifies that he doesn't have a problem with that, but he understands that it can be difficult for people to talk about that if that is the case. So he says that if that's the reason they haven't met, then he can be understanding of that. And he has expressed that to Chance as well. I personally feel like it's, it's a little bit, I don't know how I feel about this uh, because I'm not trans, right? So this is just my opinion as a cis person. I feel like if you aren't sure 
if someone is trans or not, or if they're not like explicitly stating that they're trans, you know, they just like put a hashtag. I, I don't know if you should have gone on national TV and said that. That just feels, it feels weird to me, but he did it. So we move, I guess. Prepare to be triggered. That's not good. That's not healthy. Matthew says that he considers them to be in a relationship, but he and Chance have never had the discussion that they're like locked in, they're not talking to other people, they're exclusive. So he thinks they're in a relationship, Matthew's in a relationship. We're not sure if Chance is in a relationship with Matthew yet. I know something you don't. I know something you will never know. Then Matthew tells us that they talk on the phone at least once a day, which I, I, don't, I love that. Like, I don't know. I just, I love when people give me attention, bro. <laughs> So then we finally get the clarity from Matthew that once Chance moves down, there is that understanding that they will then be in an exclusive relationship. If you like it, I love it, says a black woman who neither likes or loves it. So then we get into one of the times that Matthew and Chance were actually supposed to meet up when Chance was allegedly in Atlanta. We were supposed to meet up at Magic City one time. The famous strip club. Yeah. Which, I, that's weird to me. I, why would the first place you want to meet your booze at a strip club? That's a... Why would that be a good first date to you? But anyways, Matthew then went to the strip club that they were supposed to meet at and was waiting for Chance. And then Chance said that when he was on his way there, his root canal came out. I mean, come on, you gotta know that some of this stuff is bogus. Be fucking for real. But also I feel like that is, it's interesting. <laughs> it's better than like, oh, my dog died. My great uncle's cousin to the mom's side, twice removed, goldfish died, gone to a car accident. It's a unique catfish excuse, but it's still a catfish excuse nonetheless. But Matthew said that in that moment is when he realized that something was off and you just realized right then? Wait. Okay, sir. But that's when he decided to reach out to the show. Matthew also says that recently he has been looking for chance on social media and as of about two weeks ago, he can't find any of his profiles. Oh Lord. So it's like, um, this man that you say is your man's blocked you. He blocked you on social media. <laughs> this is so funny to me because it's like y'all are y'all are in your 30s or like Matthew's damn near 30. But blocking each other on social media, talking about you're supposed to be in a relationship. I feel like that's so petty. But Matthew actually talked to Chance about this and Chance did not answer the question. He was just like beating around the bush. Like, oh, you didn't block me? Hmm, that's weird. So that's very sus, like obviously Chance is hiding something. Matthew says that this whole blocking situation happened right as soon as Matthew told Chance that he was gonna reach out to the show, which I feel like if I were ever in like a catfish type of situation, I don't know if I would let them know that I'm reaching out to the show to be 100% honest, because I feel like that kind of just defeats the purpose. It gives them a chance to try and hide some things before the show gets involved, but thank God. I will never be on this show until they call me to co-host. But Kamiko then goes on her own profile and she looks for Chance's profile and they find it right away. So then the trio goes to Matthew and Chance's messages and they see that some of the texts get a little steamy. They're quite flirty and Neve seems to be fully here for it. Wow, very flirty. Yes. So then the crew heads out. Neve says that he, he wants to know what Chance is hiding and me too. And I know you wanna know too. So make sure you keep watching because this, this, it gets so juicy and messy. So Kamiko and Neve get to investigating. Matthew actually sent them Chance's resume. So they look at it and they decide to give Chance's most recent boss a call and they get a busy tone. Oh no. Is it yet? You don't find that suspicious. I don't remember the last time I really got a busy tone when I called somebody to keep it a buck with you, but so that's weird. It's already off to a weird start. So then they look at the resume again, and it says that Chance worked for the New York City Police Department as an auxiliary officer, which I don't even know what that means. Also like how convenient is it that Matthew used to work as a police officer and now Chance all of a sudden used to work with the police as well in some capacity, like. Sure, Jan. They decide to try and call his alleged boss from, from the NYPD and they get another busy tone. Whoa. What? So it's like, what is happening? So then they look up the alleged police officer's phone number and her name is in fact Yvonne as it states on the resume. But then we find out that she has the same last name as Chance. Eve comes to the conclusion that Yvonne, his reference on his resume, his alleged boss is very just likely his mom. Trust, you will be dealt with. Period. 
So then they decide to try and confirm this fact by looking at Yvonne's possible relatives and Leslie, which is Chance's birth name, and his twin, Elizabeth, are both listed there at age 32. So Neve says that if he lied on his resume, he could be lying about everything. But I'm going to keep it so real with you. Like most people that I know 100% floof their resumes. I'm not saying I do this, okay, for the record. I'm not saying I do this, but most people I know do this. And they also put their friends and their family down as references. So I don't think it's anything that crazy. I think the crazy part is saying that you worked for a police department and then putting your mom as your reference for the police department. I think that's crazy. Like that's too far in my humble opinion. So then they decide to head over to Chance's Instagram and they message someone named Hasina because she left a comment on Chance's most recent post. So they then go to Facebook to try and find Chance and they find his page right away, but as they're looking at it, they get a call from Hasina. Neve tells her that they're looking for Chance and she says that she met Chance on Instagram a little while ago, but they've never hung out in person because Chance always disappears. Nothing new, nothing changed, same old shit couple red flags here the first red flag is y'all met on instagram the same way that chance and matthew met so I, so i feel like chance just has like a million little biddies lined up I, i'm just getting that vibe from this but also second red flag is this is another person in chance's life or his online life is now saying that he always disappears so then she says that chance has talked about going to atlanta before but when he told her why he was going he said that he was going to visit a friend who works at magic city the strip club and this is the same strip club that he and matthew were supposed to meet up at they hop off the call with Hasina, and then they try to find Wanda or Rhonda at the club. So they call the club, Katrina picks up the phone and she immediately knows who they're talking about. Oh yeah, you're talking about Sharanda. So she gives them Sharonda's Instagram, they hop off the phone and then Neve messages Sharonda. She literally calls them back within seconds and I'm like, damn, these people are so messy. We've traced the call, it's coming from inside the house. But also like if Catfish was ever hit me up like, hey, we need to talk to you about an episode we're doing, I'm calling you back right away too. So I can't even blame them. But she quickly says that, that she doesn't know who Chance or Leslie is. No, I don't know who that is. And then she rushes off the phone. So well, I'm at work right now, so I, I, I gotta go. Okay. Hmm. Weird. That's suspicious. That's weird. So then they go back to Chance's Facebook page and they can't find it. They have been blocked. Chance did that shit with the absolute quickness. And this is really sketchy. So obviously Hasina or Sharonda were the ones to reach out to Chance and let him know something was going on for him to be able to block whatever page they were looking at him from or would do whatever he did to make it so that they couldn't start they couldn't do their investigation so they head back over to matthews and matthew says that i'm ready to find out something good oh lord sir if you want to find out something good you should not have come to catfish why are you pulling me i'm right this is not the place for you they then quickly fill him in on the findings of their investigation. Matthew says that everything is weird and he just wants answers. Like we want answers too for you, but also I just feel like, I don't know, a lot of the episodes that we've been covering lately, I just feel like give up on the relationship before it gets to the catfish point. I don't know, they, people are just really holding on for dear life. Like the relationships are swinging them, they're trying to fucking throw them out the window and they just won't get out. But Neve then decides to call Chance. It rings once and then goes right to voicemail. So Neve then sends him a text. And as he's sending them the text, they get a call from Sharonda. And she says that she wants to talk in person. And I, oh. So they head out to do just that. And it's like, oh my gosh, what is about to go on right now? What's about to go down right now? So they pull up to the spa that Sharonda is working at. And she lets us know that she just goes by Rando. So they briefly fill her in and she says that it's no, no, like real it's confusing yeah. right. as to why Matthew would want to contact Catfish for Chance. Miss Squirrel, please use context clues. Please. What is Catfish a show about? They're asking about a specific person. What, why do you think Matthew wants to meet Chance? Be fucking for real. So then... Oh my gosh, she drops a bomb on us. And this is really something that I was not even expecting her to say. She says that she is Chance's girlfriend. I'm Chance's girlfriend. We've been talking about two years, two and a half years. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> Lord Jesus, you're his what? You're his who? Nah, this is messy, this is messy, this is messy. So Matthew then lets us know that Chance never mentioned he had a girlfriend. Electric chair which I would hope that Matthew didn't know that because if you're out here being the side piece, that's messy. 
we don't like cheaters over here but i really believe that matthew knew nothing about this because if he knew then he wouldn't have been pursuing chance like this like i really do believe that so sharanda then confirms that chance does live in new york and he's always in atlanta with me he's always with me when he comes here Trying to set up some little situationships when you're coming down to visit your girl is crazy. But also like she's handling this much better than I would. But y'all already know that. Cause I feel like now it's clear for the record I'm a little bit crazy. So I would not be handling it like this, but that's just me. <laughs> Neve then just straight up asks her. Forgive me for asking, but are, are you trying to get us not to meet up with Chance? And she asks why that matters because she's Chance's girlfriend. Oh no. <sighs> Girl, the fact that you keep repeating this like it's something to be proud of. Being tied down by a man who is cheating on you is nothing to be proud of. That's mine. And that's what you're gonna settle for. I'm gonna stick beside him. But like, yes, we understand that you're his girlfriend and for whatever reason, you're proud to be his girlfriend. You keep repeating that. But your man is cheating on you with the man standing in front of you. So wouldn't you want answers? Things are now very tense, they're very awkward. So Neva's like, can you just let Chance know that we wanna meet him? And tearfully, she says, okay. Me personally, I would've got on that phone. I would've been like, yeah, Catfish wants to meet you and we're fucking done, bitch. You could choke for all I care, cheating on me. And then I get embarrassed on national TV because your messy ass didn't want to be honest. Hell no. And I'm burning all the shit that you left at my house or I'm selling it. Probably both. <laughs> so they head out and Matthew says- I'm confused. And child, so are we. We are also confused. So the next morning, Neve says that he has no update, but he thinks that Randa is lying about being with Chance. And I personally don't think that's the case. I think that she is really in a relationship with that man. I don't know why he thinks that she's lying to cover up for him. Like that's, mm -mm, I don't believe that for one second. I really do think that they are in a relationship. And I think that's why she kept asking like, so why would you want to meet with my boyfriend type of thing? So I don't know. Out of all the possible lies that are in this situation, I don't know why Neve hyper fixated on that one, but we move. So Neve then calls Chance once again, and this time he actually picks up. Chance says that- I'm dealing with the, uh, the death of my family right now. Because his father just passed away, so now is not a good time. Neve says that they'll just regroup, and whenever Chance is ready to meet up, he can just give Neve a call. After they get off the phone, Neve right away insinuates that Chance is lying about his father dying as an excuse to not meet up, and Kamiko is very uncomfortable with this. I don't want to assume that. That's I don't either, really but dark because yes a lot of catfishes do this they lie about people dying in their close circles their parents their uncles whatever their dogs but i don't know this one felt a little bit different to me because chance had already told matthew and told his girlfriend that his dad had been sick for some time so it just felt a little bit icky i don't know i don't know why but a producer then says that they've heard crazier excuses but because of the timing and the situation, everything that's going on, it's best to just put a pause on the investigation and start it back up when or if Chance reaches out to them again. So they call Matthew and just kind of tell him that this is not an appropriate time to pop up on Chance and put him on TV. Kamiko and Neve then head to Matthews and Neve says that they have had people on the show lie to avoid meeting before, but Kamiko, again, she looks very uncomfortable with this insinuation. And Matthew says that- I don't think they would just lie about right. that because that, be, that would be harsh. And I believe that Matthew believes that. I believe that Chance is lying about a lot of things, but I, for whatever reason, I don't really believe that he's lying about this. But Matthew then agrees to pause everything for a few weeks until Chance decides that he's ready to meet up. So five weeks later, which is not that long, but five weeks later, Neve gets a call from Chance. He says that and he's ready to meet. Sidebar. In this shot, Neve has what looks like a queen marble pothos, and I also have one of those. Hold on, let me let me go get it and I can show you. This is her. She's beautiful. She used to be a lot bigger, but I recently propagated her. I'm a huge plant lover, like obsessed with plants, and I've definitely been thinking about doing a little plant tour for channel members. So if y'all want that, definitely let me know because I would love nothing more than to show off my plant babies and talk about them for far too long. 
back to the episode. So Chance says that he is ready to end the situation, which I'm like, that's a weird way to put it. Like, are you trying to take someone out or? <laughs> and Neve says that he will make the arrangements, which just means all the people who work for the show will make the arrangements. But Neve being at home with his family, then getting his wife to watch the kids and film him at the same time is so funny to me. Like he said, Laurie, you're about to get your ass up and work. There is no sleep for the catfish household work now. <laughs> Neve gives Matthew a call, fills him in on everything that just happened, and Matthew says that he is ready to meet. So Neve then calls Kimiko and she is very excited as well. So the next day, Neve and Kimiko head to the airport to pick up Matthew. Matthew says that since Chance's father passed, they haven't really been in communication much. They still don't seem to be 100% sure that his dad died. And when I say they, I mean like Neve and the rest of the crew, like Kimiko and Matthew seem to 100% believe it. And I feel like it takes a special type of psycho to lie about such a thing. To, I don't know why, but for whatever reason to me, it's different when the catfish like texts and is like, oh, I can't meet up because so-and-so just died versus like on the phone, you're saying that. And then you're also telling your girlfriend that your dad is dying. You're telling this, your side piece, your little bitty that your dad is dying. And then he actually passes. I just feel like you'd have to be really crazy to do that. But they finally, after all this time, they pull up to Chance's place and Kamiko's outfit is really cute. I'm really living for her. I just love her as a guest host, the vibe she brings. I just, ugh. She seems so invested. She is so sweet. I really wish that they would have brought her back a little bit more than some of the other guest hosts who didn't really do a good job in my opinion, but I love this episode with her. Neve then goes and knocks on the door a bunch and finally Chance steps out. What's up? What's up? How you doing? What's going on? How are you? Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. He walks out and shakes Matthew's hand and seems really nervous. What's up, Matt? What's going on? Yeah. Uh, and also I feel like it's weird to shake your man's hand. Like, you're not gonna hug, you're not gonna kiss, you're not gonna do none of that, you're gonna shake his hand? Like this is a business meeting? What the hell is going on here? Chance confirms that his dad did in fact pass away. And he says that whenever he was in Atlanta, he was in fact visiting Randa, his girlfriend. Saranda, you guys are, ex are together. exclusive. Yes, we are. Chance then says that Matthew should have figured it out. And Kamiko was like, what the fuck are you talking about? She doesn't say it like that, but keep up. Chance says that they kind of sort of flirt through text, but he does that with everybody. That's a problem. If you have a girlfriend, you shouldn't be flirting with anybody but your girlfriend, whether it's through text or in real life. So you're wrong for that. I don't know why you're trying to pass the book off to Matthew. Like it's his fault that you're a little slutty slut slut slut. Like it's his fault that you're a little cheater cheater pumpkin eater. But Chance then also says that Matthew should have gotten the hint when he would send messages to Chance and Chance wouldn't respond. I'm about to beat this bitch up. Don't play, do not play right now. Cause what are you talking about? We saw the flirty ass messages. We saw the shirtless pictures in bed. Don't play with us, come on now. Kamiko then pipes up and is like, but you did neglect to say that you had a girlfriend. Like, how are you gonna be mad at him? for not knowing that your flirting didn't mean anything. Trash. Weirdo. So then Neve pipes up and he says that Chance was sending very clear signals and Chance then tries to insinuate that those signals were being sent platonically. Lord have mercy. You flirt with your friends? Why the fuck you lying? Why, Why you always lying? You send your friends shirtless pictures of you? Stop fucking lying. Platonically? I don't do that. That's never been my vibe. I don't understand that. Neve then invites the crew into Chance's house, <laughs> but then he and Matthew stay outside to talk. And it's like, why would you just invite everyone into Chance's home and you're not even going in? Like this is real top tier Neve behavior. But Neve just basically has a little pep talk with Matthew and tells him that Chance is being unfair and Matthew should not let Chance walk all over him. Also because Matthew is like five times his size. You could just squash him like a little bug. <laughs> so inside, Kamiko is trying to clarify if Matthew and Chance were romantically involved. And Chance says no. And he says it in a very disgusted way. Uh, no. Which is very weird to me because y'all were very clearly romantically involved. Like you're not gonna try and paint it out like Matthew's delusional. That man may be a lot of things. He may be wrong for being strung on for three years. He may be wrong for being a police officer, but he is not wrong for thinking that y'all were romantically connected when you were in fact romantically connected. Kamiko then is like, okay, but y'all were flirting. And Chance says that- I don't wanna date a dude. So you don't date men at mm -mm. all? Oh, okay. 
And then he has the audacity to say Matthew lied when saying that he was bisexual. Wait, hold up. Sir, you are the one who has been lying to us about everything. Don't play with us right now. Do not play with us right now. So Neve and Matthew then head inside and tensions are high. So Chance wastes absolutely no time sputtering off some more bullshit. He looks at Matthew dead in his eyes and says, So you telling these people that I'm bisexual, Matthew? And Matthew is like, um, yeah, because in the past you told me you've dated men and women and you enjoy dating men and women. So that would make you bisexual. Chance is then speechless and is acting very erratic. And I personally do not think Matthew is lying, but I do think Catfish kind of handled this incorrectly. It's my opinion! I think that Matthew just assumed that everyone in Chance's life knew that he was bi and he just assumed that Chance was out, like out of the closet. Based on Chance's reaction, I would say none of this is true. Like even based on the way his girlfriend reacted, I don't think that Chance was out. I don't think that Chance was comfortable making it known that he was out. And I don't think that he intended for everyone to know that he is bisexual. So I, I can understand why he's mad because he feels angry about a lot of things, more specifically, like he was kind of sort of outed, even though like he was, I don't know, it's he, he kind of was already out there, but not a hundred percent. So I just think that it's somewhat irresponsible for Catfish to proceed without knowing if they were going to potentially out someone with the episode because that can have such harmful ramifications, especially when it's on international TV. And I do not want to hear anyone in the comments talking about, oh, well, you think it's irresponsible, but you're doing the same thing. I am a tiny YouTube channel. MTV is an international billion dollar corporation. If you really are trying to do the mental gymnastics to make us seem like me talking about something that they already did and them doing the thing that was potentially harmful are the same thing, I need you to go and take a nap, eat a snack, because it's not the same. Matthew then tries to say that Chance would send flirty emojis and texts and Chance says, he doesn't address that part at all. Like, he doesn't deny that he was in fact flirting with him at this moment. He just says that he's never going to date Matthew. What? Bro, what are you talking about, man? So Neve then asks what we are all thinking. Why then were you talking to him at all? If you're not bi, if you're not interested in him, you don't date men and you have no interest in pursuing a relationship with him. And then there's silence. Denial is a river in Egypt! You're Chance then has the audacity to open his virtually non-existent lips and say that this is the first time he's even been remotely aware that Matthew has romantic feelings for him. Be fucking for real. The lie detector has determined that that was a lie, sir. Neve then says, okay, but you say that you're not bisexual. But you were having a very flirtatious relationship. You're intentionally not mentioning a girlfriend. You want to maintain a possible romantic connection with a man. Chance then tries to squirm his way out of it by saying that he blocked Chance on Instagram to make it clear that he doesn't want anything to do with him. And Neve is like, yeah, okay, but you did that recently. What's not clicking? So Neve then kind of goes off on him. He says, you seem upset. Well, I'm not getting that because like. And if the worst thing this guy has done is really liked you and hoped to be in a relationship with you. I'm like, can you be a little nicer to him? And like, what is wrong with you? Chance then says that Matthew is the catfish and everyone looks around like, like, what is he talking about? So then Chance stands up behind Matthew and asks him if he's a catfish. And Matthew's like, no. And then he asks him again, are you a catfish? Matthew says no once again. And then Chance rips off Matthew's toupee and throws it on the floor and then runs outside. What is it? Oh, oh my God. Oh, wow. What the fuck is happening? Never in my life have I seen a man whip off another man's wig like so like that. Chance is then outside ranting and raving, saying that he never told Matthew he dated men, but then he said that it's none of anyone's business. But it's like, which is it? Because by that second statement, it just sounds like it's true, but you want it to kind of be down low, which is your right. But at the same time, if that was the case, like if you did not want to be out, you didn't want to do all this, then you should have just said that when Matthew told you he was going to write into the show because Matthew seems like he's a real respectable, a real straight up guy. So if Chance was like, hey, I'm actually not out. I do not want people to know about this relationship, whatever the case may be. I do not want to be outed on national TV. Matthew would have dropped it. And granted, he also would have dropped Chance, but Chance made his decision to not 
communicate what was going on to Matthew. And this is not to say that being outed is right. I don't think that that should happen. But I also think that there's many things going on in the situation. And Matthew did not know that Chance may be struggling with his sexuality. He did not know that Chance was not out. He didn't know that Chance doesn't actually identify as bisexual. Like there's just so many things going on. So when Chance ran outside, Neve, Kimiko and Matthew are still inside and they're talking about how fucked up, how aggressive and crazy that was. And Matthew just confirms that he's okay. Yeah, I'm okay. So then Kimiko goes outside to talk to Chance because I assume if Neve went out, he would have swung. Like, <laughs> Neve was really mad this episode. He was mad about a lot of things, but this really got him heated. So then Kimiko asks what's making him so upset. Chance says that he recently lost his father. He's on anxiety meds, he's stressed, and he feels like Matthew isn't being honest. I feel like this is a lot and it's very overwhelming. And I can understand that and I can empathize with that. Like losing someone close to you is never easy. Having to be on anxiety meds, it just, I don't know. It, there's just a lot going on. So I can definitely extend some empathy and a little bit of grace like a, a little a little tiny bit you see the little space between my fingers that's much grace i'm giving him because ripping off someone's hairpiece is not a normal way to cope with life's troubles and we're not about to act like that's a normal way to cope with your struggles we're not gonna do that so then they head back inside and chance says that he wants to apologize but he sits down with a smirk on his face and i'm like okay so you do not feel bad at all you're actually proud and you're just kind of putting on a show for the cameras which is making me sick you were not know what you were- I want to say evil. I want to say evil. So Neve then tells him what he did was wrong. It was fucked up. And he says that Chance is being a dick. Like, Neve does not care anymore. He's over this. So Chance then finally admits that it's not unreasonable for Matthew to think that he is in fact bisexual, but he doesn't say it himself. So I think it's just something that he's still struggling with. Chance then apologizes and Matthew will not even look in his direction, which is totally fair because this would be an upsetting situation for a number of reasons. You find out you're the side piece and then the man that you think that you're about to build a life with, the man that you've been saving yourself for, the man that you want to have kids with, rips off your toupee. So Chance then says that he hopes he didn't hurt Matthew's scalp. He apologizes once again. But I am sorry. Matthew accepts the apology. I accept that says that he got the answers he needed and he's ready to leave the relationship in the past where it belongs in the trash to be completely honest with you so they head out and in the car nave tells matthew that he has to move on and matthew says but there's no chance at all that i'll have a real chance with chance right and that was a bar if i ever heard one so in our two month follow-up we find out that matthew is in a new relationship with a woman they're really into each other which is really cute and i really do love that for him after the monstrosity of this experience with chance i'm happy that it didn't jade him it didn't make him hesitant he was just like okay let me just go find love with someone else who actually wants to love me and he says that after the confrontation he and chance spoke only once but he took the whole situation as a lesson and he's not bitter about it which i love for him and then of course we find out that the show tried to get into contact with chance and they weren't able to he ignored all their requests for a follow-up oh mm. all right child that episode was a lot that was a lot i really i think that this was possibly one of the episodes that Catfish did not need to air. That's just me personally, in my opinion, I don't, I don't know if this was a good idea to air it or to air all of it in its entirety. This episode was a hot, a hot mess. And that's why y'all requested it because you're messy and I love the mess and you love the mess. So we love each other. Okay, thank you so very much for watching. Thank you so very much for being here. Make sure to like, make sure to comment, make sure to subscribe and hit that bell notification so you're aware of every single time that I upload. If there's an episode or a show that you would like to see me cover, make sure to drop it down in the comments. Make sure to let me know your thoughts, your feelings and your opinions also down in the comments so we can discuss like besties do. Also in the last video, a lot of you were asking questions about this picture of me at my TEDx talk. Yes, I really did a TEDx talk. I think I was in grade 10. I was in grade 10 or 11, I wanna say. I was definitely in high school. Um, and if you want to know about it, definitely just let me know and I can include it in a video or I can make a separate video about it. But yeah, the picture is real. I really did that. Let me know if you wanna hear about it. Thank you so very much for being here. I appreciate you so much. Also, y'all peep the new mic. Y'all peep the new mic. Thank you to Kaya from Comfy Girl Curls and Creating with Kaya, who is one of the first creators who I ever actually 
spoke to about content creation, gave me a lot of really good advice. She's another black Canadian content creator, love her stuff. And if you wanna get into content creation yourself, she has a lot of good tips and tricks and advice on that. So you can definitely check out her channels. But the new mic is based off of her recommendations. So thank you so very much for being here. I appreciate you so much and I will see you in the next video.